All right. We're on Facebook. Hello. Anything showing up? Yep, we're live on Facebook. All right, there we go. So I'm going to record here. Yes, Yay! We, we got uh, it to work. We did it. Oh my gosh. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Thanks, yep. technology. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Yep. So, welcome, everyone. Yay. We made it. And it's still on the day that we said we were going to kind of. So win. Um, so yeah, today's citizen science challenge. Let me share my screen here so you can see. Wait, our... Who are you? Who are oh, you? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me introduce myself. I'm Ann Biddle. I work for Cooperative Extension 4-H office, statewide office here in Alaska. I am in Palmer. And who are you? Um, my name is Jody Anderson. I'm the director of the University of Alaska Fairbanks um, Matanuska Experiment Farm and Extension Center. And we're super excited today because we're doing our very first in a series of citizen science workshops where we'll be doing citizen science with you once a week. Um, and this week, really stoked that we're starting with a whole uh, challenge, I guess. I mean, like, that's pretty cool, Anne. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, stop share. Hang on, I'm looking for my screen, sorry. That's okay. So we're going to do with you a, uh, nope. Oh, you gotta find the right one. I have too many tabs open. Yeah. There we go. It's still just your Zoom page. It is? Oh, that's an escape page. There it is. La la la. Hooray! It's showing up for you. Today is our Walkabout Wednesdays snow melting challenge. So we're going to be doing some cool um, citizen science here today. Jody kind of talked about a little bit and we will roll right into it. So the big question is how long is this snow going to last? We've gotten a lot here in South Central Alaska this winter as compared to last winter, which we didn't get hardly any. And I don't think I got out my winter jacket last year. So this year, winter jacket, winter boots all the time, pretty much. So we have all of the snow that we're dealing with now at the beginning of April. And so this challenge in citizen science is going to help us experiment on different ways that we can safely melt the snow over our garden and play areas because we want to this time of year, especially now that a lot of us are stuck inside, having a hard time getting outside and keeping that physical distance that we all need to do, um, we're itching to be outside. And so we want the snow to be gone for the most part. I'm sure there's those people out there that love it and want it to continue. Uh, and it can stay up in the mountains for those people that want to do that sort of thing. That's great. But down here, I would like to be getting in my garden and just seeing some grass would be lovely as well. So what is the best approach? So if you guys um, have been a part of our Citizen Science Academy on the um, 21st of March, it was a Saturday, we, um, and myself and one of our colleagues, uh, Deshanna York, all got together and taught a citizen science academy. And we're going to continue these uh, academies quarterly, but um, I just wanted to, we're gonna always have this screen just to remind all of us what we're doing. Like, what's the goal? What's the point? What's the purpose? And of course, our little um, scientist uh, with the glasses and the bow tie uh, on top of, of uh, Matanuska Peak there. And uh, with our farm kind of looking there, um, but really the whole purpose of what we're trying to do with Citizen Science Academy and, and Citizen Science in general is, you know, are we, 
we'll, we can all participate, no matter what your training is, no matter what your background is, no matter what your age is, we can all be part of sci of the scientific world. And the reality in, you know, is that we're really all scientists all the time anyway. And what we're going to do today is kind of formally go through with this PowerPoint, um, uh, kind of formally go through the steps that are taken to um, to actually go through an experiment. Like um, scientists don't start with an experiment. They actually start with a question um, and then they think about it. And that's how we all do it. We've done it when you flip a light switch on and then the light doesn't come on. We, when we turn your car, the key in your, in your ignition in your car and nothing happens. I mean, we, we all go through this process, but what Anna and I wanted to focus on today with our challenge in the background kind of is that what we're hoping to do is, is really um, emphasize the process is, is what we're talking about today. And every, every scientific pursuit is not incredibly formal by any means, but we do want to give you guys that construct so that you're able to to kind of see, and then when you do participate in citizen science, maybe you're involved in um, in some research project for some particular researcher anywhere where you're watching this. Um, this is how they approach their work. And so the more you know about how science works and the more that you practice it, then the better scientist you become and the better citizen scientist you become. All right, so the process that we all go through is actually has a term, the scientific method, and this is what scientists do. And it's basically just guidelines that goes through and how you do research. And, you know, this is a, the formal way of setting it up and going through it. But like Jody said, we all do this kind of innately where, you know, we're asking the question, we're doing the background research. The, the hypothesis, we're doing experiments, but we're doing these kind of, it's so fluid the way we do it, that sometimes it's good to just think about why we're doing these things and kind of break it up into these steps. And then it um, kind of lets you know about the importance of each step and how you can't really leave parts out if you want to do it in the systematic way to produce these results. And so, uh, we're going to go through these kind of individually, a couple are lumped together, but, um, you know, basically it's, uh, there's a couple of, you know, looking online and from other science classes and my kids are in science, um, uh, it kind of varies between five steps to nine steps, depending on how you kind of clump some of these together. And so we kind of, the way we went through it, we made it, you know, simplified this a little bit. Um, but it's, you know, it's a great flow chart to go through because it makes you understand how it all works and why you're doing what you're doing. Awesome. Yeah. So the very first step that every scientist goes through is that they ask a question. It's just that simple. It's, it's just asking a question and sometimes the question is huge and has implications that are insanely gigantic and sometimes the questions are just wow what about that type of questions and so what Anna and I decided because of all of the things that she said with our snow and some of us are already starting our plants inside to transplant out into our gardens. And gosh, wouldn't it be cool to speed this up a little bit or at least to make it look like we can get out there. We're talk about soil in a couple weeks when we do our citizen science work in a couple Wednesdays. But for this week, we wanted to figure out how can we get rid of the snow? But not just get rid of the snow, because as my husband told me, he's like, well, just throw a bunch of salt on it. It'll melt. Well, yeah, that's true. But that's not really the way we want to do it over our garden beds, because that salt is just going to melt right down through the snow 
but then into our soil. And now we have a little bit of a problem if we're gonna try to grow some plants there. Um, so Anne and I thought, wouldn't it be really fun if we figured out with some materials that we have around the house, can we come up with a study, an experiment, where we can test and ask this question, can we safely get rid of snow and not have to shovel it ourselves? <laughs> well, shoveling it too, because if you're doing it over your garden beds, you don't want to start scooping up parts of your dirt and things like that and moving all that stuff around. Or sometimes if you got perennials down there, things. Yep. So yeah, yeah, first is ask the question, what's your interest? What are you willing to do? Exactly. So then we're going to, you know, the next step is kind of to research our ideas, you know, and, you know, so the question was, how can we safely do it? And so, you know, those research ideas, they don't have to be crazy, you know, just like, you know, thinking about these things, like what makes the snow melt? You know, what do I have around the house that I could use that I don't have to go to the store or buy something new? And, you know, when it hits the ground, like as in the salt experiment. It doesn't do good things when you have concentrated salt in certain areas of your yard and garden. And, you know, what can you do? What makes the snow melt? Um, I guess we already said that. And then how will I document the work? So, you know, you have all of these things in mind as you're developing your idea, because uh, the next part of the scientific method then is to develop your hypothesis. Exactly. So you're going to, to take the research that you've done and the research, like Anne just said, it doesn't have to, we're not talking dissertation level research. You don't have to sit on Google for days and days figuring this out. You already have ideas. You know what makes snow melt. You, you know that. But let's, let's go a little deeper. Let's think about it a little bit. And, and as some of the questions that were on the page just in front of this one, like, what do I have around the house? We really don't want to make this a reason to go out. Well, I mean, we could go outside, but we don't have to go to the store for it. So you're going to kind of think about all those questions and the answers that you came up with. So that's the research that you did. And maybe you do want to look up something of, about the safety of of a particular material in soil or for plants, if that's what you're thinking about. But once you get this research, once you've answered like your questions to kind of start thinking about it, then you wanna formulate what's called a hypothesis. And the hypothesis is just a, just a one sentence, this will happen, that's it. And that sentence, is going to be your statement that explains what's going to happen. It needs to be measurable. You have to be able to say um, it's going to do more snow melt. Something's going to be faster, so you're going to deal with time. Maybe if you say it melts, it melted more snow, then you'll have to do volume or uh, some sort of measurement. You have to be able to to quantify, right, or hold or measure your answer to compare one thing to the other to show that it did it. And then also you need variables. And this is, this is the tough part. When you think about your hypothesis, um, sometimes your hypothesis can be that no change, no, no variable is gonna be just fine. And then that's going to be what you want. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit when we go out to design our, our experiment, we'll talk a little bit about the variables involved and why we're doing what we're doing. But you want a really nice hypothesis. So for example, on this page, um, I just decided, hey, this will be really funny. Um, obviously, I'll say that the snow will melt fastest in the area I added heat with a blowtorch. Oh, well, brilliant. That's great, Jody. Solved. Well, <laughs> we've got some problems with that one, but if blowtorch is one of my options, 
of in safety, of course. But if that's one of my options, then it's going to have to be, if you notice what I wrote in here, fastest. So time is going to be my measurement. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to set my experiment up based on time is my main goal, my main measurement based on this hypothesis. That won't be ours. We're not doing blow torches. We're just doing simple things. And we'll actually be measuring um, height. Um, well, actually depth. the depth <laughs> of the snow. And as that hopefully decreases um, the, the depth of snow based on what we're adding to it. So I think another, this is another, key. Another key point of the hypothesis, it has to be something that can be replicated. So Jody's going to be doing this experiment at her house. I'm going to be doing it as well at my house and whoever else wants to do it, will do it at their house and that we will compare our information. But it's gotta be something that can easily be done elsewhere. Exactly. So once we have our hypothesis, then the fun part starts and we get to experiment. So this is where we kind of really get our nerd on because you get to design your experiment and you have a procedure in place of what it could be pretty simplistic. It could be complex with whatever kind of experiment you choose. But for ours is going to be uh, what notes and observations we want to take um the measurement that we're taking and then we are going to do this over time as well so that's our experiment and so then you know check the procedure if it all goes well that's what we're going to do if it doesn't we're going to make changes if it's not um not produce if it's i'm blanking here <laughs> So if you're if you're if you're finding that you're not getting any results at all, um, or something really wonky happened to your experiment, then then you start all over again, basically. Right. Or if your variables aren't that much different, that usually is an issue. Um, so I mean that's where the fun part comes, and the and the key is here to document all of the changes that you're making so that you do not replicate the mistakes if at all possible and that you just move forward with making positive changes. So one thing on this slide that I do want to just bring out really quick and as a as a scientist myself I know this is true because of my experiments and not all of them positive but the thing is is that just when you check your procedure and it's and it's not going the way that you're wanting it to for whatever reason that actually that no box can stem into its whole a whole nother test a whole nother experiment another hypothesis like in most things in the world when you come across no you you know, and you're working on something, then you see it as like a negative, as, as a failure, like it didn't work. Blah. But in science, so much, I mean, so much is learned, so much is, is, um, is the base, so many no's and failures are the base of amazing findings later down the line. So when you check your procedure and it's not quite working out the way you thought, and as you make changes, don't either, you know, either start your hypothesis over again. That's okay. You can do that and set it up. But you what you want to do is 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 don't see it as a negative thing. Like the little dude in the middle has a like it's his whole head is red and he's steaming. But that is actually not the reaction you should have when things don't work out. You should be stoked because like there's a whole nother issue, a whole nother question that you could you could ask a whole nother experiment or two or five or twelve that you get to do to answer different questions down the line. So if you're ever caught in this loop as you're doing science, don't it's okay. Just start again. Well, and I think so too, to that point, the, the beauty of the hypothesis is that you're trying to either prove it or disprove it. 
Mm -hmm. And so if things aren't like, if you think, you know, your hypothesis and you're pr trying to prove your hypothesis, if things aren't going in that direction, you are disproving your hypothesis. And that is like equally important. Just exactly. Like Jody said. Yep, absolutely. So. So what you want to do is when we talked about that measurable piece of your hypothesis, you, you, you have to do measurements somehow. And the best way to do that is, is to really um, take notes, right? Like take notes. Now, you know, I'm pretty old, <laughs> not as old as Anne. <laughs> by a month, but anyway, um, the, the really cool thing is that the technology has changed so much that now you can do so many um, recordings, you can document everything pretty much on a smartphone, but I'm really old fashioned and I love, absolutely love my notebooks and I love taking observations, writing down all of the information in my notebook with a pencil. It just makes me super happy. I really do enjoy it. Though I, I'm gonna say this too, as much as I enjoy all of that, Anne has developed some pretty sweet technology here for this particular experiment and for our future experiments that I'm actually gonna use a little bit and kind of nerd out on as well. But the key is regardless of how you do it, whether you use a smartphone and your camera and your notes and all that stuff, or if you use like old lady like me and you just use pencil and paper and rulers and all of that sort of stuff, it doesn't matter how you do it, you just have to do these observations and measurements. They have to be consistent. You can't measure in different units when you decide to measure. You can't measure at different times of the day. You have to really set your, yourself up to do observations at the same times in the same way every time and continue this until you've either proved or disproved your hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so for us in this particular um, challenge, we are utilizing a, um, a platform called JotForm. And some of you might be familiar with it from other forms that you've had to fill out, but it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And so you can either, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. So when you're recording your observations, you could um, do them all in your notebook and then transfer them to this jot form because this is how we are collecting the data and then we will compile it at the end. And so it needs to be in a centralized location. And if we were, um, you know, a field crew somewhere, I would collect all your notebooks. Or if we were in a class, it would all be in a spreadsheet that I would be able to access then. But since we're, you know, who knows where we are all and when we will all see each other again in person. Um, so we are gonna do it this way. So JotForm, if you go to jotform.com and there is this link here um, and we'll put this on the Facebook page or someplace where you all can get at it. Um, this takes you directly to the form, or your other option is to download the JotForm app, and then you're going to choose the form. I think I have to, what did we decide, Jody? how that worked? Um, um, I think that what you do is you... Um, maybe you, email us that you yeah. want access to the form. I think that's the key. And our emails are at the end of this presentation yeah. and we can send them out as well. But then um, I give you access to the form and then that's the form you're gonna use each time you make your observation. And so if you have it installed on your phone or tablet, it, within the structure of the form is a take photo button. So you can take a photo if you want right there, you don't have to, but it's kind of cool to see. Um, and then it puts it right in there with your observation. So it's 
there's a few things that we are going to require that you ask because these are the things we want to measure and then be able to track and show what the what the uh, variables um, made the changes to the snow melt. Cool. This is technology I've not even used before, so I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Good. So when you do your notes in your notebook or if you're using the job form like Anne set up for us, um, these are some of the, the parameters that we're, we're checking every day when you make this, um, and this can be your, in your notebook, on your phone, or in the job, for, uh, the job form. These are the uh, questions that are asked in the job form. So if you're making your observations in a notebook, you wanna just make sure you cover all of these. So yeah, so that you can put it in later. later. Yep, absolutely. And so these are pretty standard. Um, you know, anytime you're doing anything with a journal, you always start with the date. That's just pretty simple. Um, we're looking for, and when we talk about temperature, we're talking about ambient air temperature. What is the air temperature at the time of your observation? Um, where you're located. So this is this is something that if you're doing this on the app um with job form you can actually choose if you allow it access to find you or to locate you it will actually give you the gps location you can check that box and it'll upload it automatically or you can just put your address and your address can be just like the name of a street it doesn't have to be like specific uh, to any one thing, if you're worried about someone finding, um, this is just between uh, Anne and I can access it. So um, no one else can get into this and access it. But if you feel weird about it, that's okay too. Um, and you can just even do like Palmer, um, zip code, that sort of thing. Um, the time of day, and that's important. Um, Anne, why did you put time of day down as, as an important thing? for a snowmelt trial? Well, because we all know that the sun, go, you know, rotates in the sky, or I guess, you know, <laughs> uh, but it's getting warmer each day. So as it's traveling through the sky, different parts are getting shaded on the ground the yep. way the sun goes. So it's nice to, first of all, it's nice to take these measurements at the same time each day, if possible. If not <laughs> though, it's, it's critical kind of to know at what time of day you are making that particular measurement. So yep. that if something shows up wonky in the data, we can look back and be like, oh, they took it at this time of the day instead of at their usual time of the day. So, exactly. So it's and then you're gonna do just like, what does it look like? What's the sky look like? So for example, today I'm looking out the window, we'll be outside in a little bit, but looking out the window, I would say, overcast <laughs> so i think the options are sunny partly sunny mostly sunny and cloudy i think those are oh. the options i mean we don't need to have it super specific but it's just nice to know if it's like beating down sun or not that's that is a, that beating down sun is is something we're all waiting for i know wouldn't that be lovely <laughs> it'll be amazing and then today we're going to do our beginning depth because we're starting it today and we're using inches. This is important that you use the same unit of measurement throughout. Um, and then what you're measuring. So, so maybe should we talk about a little bit about exactly what the experiment is? Yeah, I think that sounds fun. Uh, because we're going to be, we have these mediums we're suggesting and that's what we've used. Um, and you'll see Jody do it when she sets up hers at her house, where we're gonna, we have a certain amount of each of these options that we've sprinkled in an area and that we're gonna be just measuring the That's snow it. underneath. That's what we're doing. Absolutely. And Absolutely. So, yeah. Yep. So we've chosen a few things that we had around our house, ash, sand, um, sawdust, coffee grounds. What else? Spruce needles. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. And then a control, one that has nothing in. Right. You always want that control. The control is basically, if we were to do nothing, what would happen? That's right. what the control is. Yeah. What would, how fast the snow would melt 
if there that, was nothing on it at all. Yep. Yep. Okay. And that's what we're doing. Cool. So yeah, then after we're done, I think I put an end date on the form for, you know, like the summer solstice, which I hope to God let us know at that point. <laughs> but I had to put an end date on there. So, <laughs> so that was ours. Um, and so then, you know, the key to citizen science and this um, the scientific method is to communicate your results because, you know, sure, it's great to keep these things in a notebook, like the first time you see a robin and all these other fun little harbingers of different seasons, but, you know, it's also pretty awesome to share this information with other people. And <sighs> whether you give a talk, um, you make these cool graphs. I mean, there's all these cool things you can do to illustrate it graphically, you know, write up whether your hypothesis was proven or if it was disproven and why, how you could change your variables. I mean, this can be just stuff you're thinking about too. But, um, you know, having discussions with other people, you know, super fun party topic, once we can get together again, um, is to talk about, hey, the snow melted under this medium fastest at my house. What about your house? You know, I'm going to try this next time because I think this would work. Or this wasn't an option available, but next year I'm going to try using this instead and see if that works. But, it's you know, it's fun to share the results. And plus, if we do this this year, and we get some good participation, or maybe it'll just be Jody and I, I don't know. Um, but still, we can do it next year again, and then compare those results. Yep. And that's the fun part about it, because then, you know, we could have my brothers in Wisconsin do it, whether they would do it or not, but that would be kind of fun to see, because the sun is different on the horizon there, you know? Yep. Absolutely. Going on, the snow is a little different, so... You know, it's super fun to be able to, you know, share this information to other people and, um, you know, just learn a little bit about snow, how it melts and the things that melt it. Right on. Yeah, I think this is really cool. And communication is key um, when you've when you've discovered something, even when you've disproven your hypothesis, it's still really cool to share. So exactly. today. We're going to use uh, for the tools, if you will, our materials that we're using. Again, our focus is trying to do this with stuff that you've got lying around the house or in the yard somewhere. So we're looking at some really simple stuff. Um, we're going to use for our plot design. Um, and so a lot of times when you're doing uh, ecological studies or, or work in uh, in an area, you're gonna cut that area into small little bits so that you can handle working in it. And that's called a plot. Um, and plots can be an acre in size. Anne and I don't live anywhere near where we can do this on, on an acre by acre scale. So we were trying to figure out how to do this so that it was easier to set up than say other things. And what we decided on doing that's standardized is we're going to use notebook paper, just a, one sheet of regular size notebook paper or printer paper. And we all know it's eight and a half by 11, eight and a half inches by 11 inches. So we're going to use those dimensions. And that's what we're using as our, as our uh, template to build our plots. So you'll need a sheet of paper. You'll want a, a ruler or your yardstick, especially depending on how deep your snow is. You guys know where your area is going to be. And so use the, the right tool to measure. Um, but a little, little tidbit here, yeah. because when I did mine earlier today, the ruler also comes in handy to score the snow around your sheet of paper. Yep. And I was going to use, yeah, my yardstick to do that in a little bit. So, yep. That's what we're using to kind of outline. You're not going to leave the paper there. You're just going to use the, the paper as your template to outline your plot space. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to want your notebook and pencil, or you're going to want your phone or whatever you're doing for your recording because you're going to start your process today. Um, and then your experiment mediums. Like Anne said, we've got five different things that we found around the house that we're gonna be able to use. Um, we decided to do one cup because that's a pretty small plot size. So we're gonna use one cup of each 
individual thing. We're also gonna have a sixth plot and that is our control plot where we don't add anything to it. We just let it stand as it is. And then you're gonna want to um, find a, <laughs> and I like how Anne says a clean-ish spot of snow in your yard. Um, it, you want it to be kind of level, which my snow is probably not as level as I'd like it to be, but um, we'll do with it what we can. Um, We've had a lot of wind this over the last week, and there's been a lot of silt that's been blowing around in the air. So most of our snow isn't super white, pristine, clean snow. And as I look out the window right now, it's kind of snaining as it is. So um, this will be kind of fun to do outside. But um, you definitely want to find a spot in your yard where you can fit three by three pieces of notebook paper or um or three by two or if you're using more material maybe you've got a bunch of stuff in the house that you want to try to sprinkle over the surface of the snow to see maybe it melts even better than something else um, remember you want to pick materials that'll be safe if you're doing this over your yard so it doesn't burn your grass or if you're doing this over your garden spots or your flower beds, you don't want those to get, you know, weird chemicals in them at all. So think about natural materials um, that you can sprinkle are going to be the easiest um, or place on top and that will stay there during our next grand wind, which you know we're gonna get here in Palmer. But certainly if you're watching this and you're in a spot that's not so windy, then maybe you can just tack something down and try that. Um, but your materials, you make sure you have those before you get started. The worst thing about uh, an experiment that starts in a bad way is you, you get everything, uh, you get ready to start your experiment and you're halfway through and realize, oh, I don't have that thing. And now what? So just gather everything together and you'll see uh, on my way outside, I'll pick up a bag. I put all of my materials in a paper bag, including my notebook and a piece of paper um, for my measuring tool and uh, my pencil. I'm going to just pick it all up at the front door on my way outside to my plot site. All right, so as Jody's getting her things together to go outside and we're going to get to watch her put up her plot. Um, I already did mine earlier today, so that we can see a little picture of it because we didn't really know how to do Facebook Live for both of us. Um, <laughs> but I'll pop out there in a little bit um, outside. But, but yeah, here on this slide is our uh, contact information. So if you guys have any questions on these things or if you wanna be a part of it and want me to share the form with you, shoot me or Jody an email and we will give you access. And then that's the form you're just gonna go to each time. You're gonna put on a new form each time you make one of your measurements. Uh, I think I have it set up so, if you have um, just your six variables, then you just fill out one form each day that you're doing the measurement. And so um, you don't have to fill out a new form for each of the meetings per day, because that would be kind of crazy um, and take a lot of time. So we just have the one form where you can do ash, sand, blah, 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 all the way down and then hit submit. And then we'll have that information. And so, so uh, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what uh, what everybody can do and um, what kind of information we can gather from it because I have some ideas myself and what I think is going to work best. But uh, but who knows? I haven't used all of these things either. So um, looks like Jody is outside. Grabbed her bag. Grabbed it, my bag. Is it raining? Um, it's it's uh, snaining a little bit. It's a little bit of uh, snow and a little bit of rain. It's kind mm -hmm. of snaining. Yeah, it's fine. 
oh my gosh it's awesome outside so um and because i'm doing this could you do me a favor and would you change the temperature for um our world and palmer mm. that would be awesome yep mm. sweet so i am outside surprise and so <laughs> <laughs> here's here's my relatively it's not super flat let me see this is a little bit better spot here it's a little flat um and it's definitely not pristine beautiful white uh as the as the newly driven snow but at least it's kind of snowy um and i don't know if you guys can it's not super deep either and i know you've got more snow than i do at your spot but yeah. um and if you'll notice i'm just gonna do this really fast um if you can see it's kind of it's kind of granular at this point um yeah it's pretty grainy just chunky ice it's rotten snow it's that time of year but we want it gone faster than anything so this is our experiment i mentioned the bag here's my yardstick actually it's bigger than a yardstick whoops bigger than a yardstick it's one of my um research tools but you guys can see um the units here are in inches okay so um this is actually um four feet long which we're not going that deep in uh, my particular bank thankfully but that's what that is and so inside my bag okay i just put it all in my bag i've got my notebook paper and this is our template and this is my notebook because i'm a nerd and i'll write it all down and then these are the collected things so we've got sawdust okay yep. so we've got some sawdust here and we've got some spruce beautiful detritus. spruce needle <laughs> do what i said detritus needles <laughs> detritus. we've got some sand right on we've got this bag that's gross and wet what the heck these are my coffee grounds used of course i will i wasn't gonna sacrifice unused coffee grounds you guys come on and then here's my measuring tool it's just one cup and the handle busted off but that's that's the kind of tool that we're talking about using and then the last but not least here is ash this is charcoal ash this is from our, our charcoal grill so it's nothing fancy and so we've got all our things here we've got our measuring cup we've got our measuring stick and we have our template so i'm going to go ahead and get started really simple i'm going to put this down and i'm actually going to use my pocket knife but i'm not going to open it i'm just going to use this end of it and i'm going to dig around it so i'm going to do that whoops i'm actually going to drop my knife into the snow first so i'm going to step in here and I'm going to just draw around. Can you guys see what I'm doing? This is what I'm doing. See, just use that as your template. Draw around so that we have even plot sizes. And of course, this is not brain surgery, guys. And don't freak out like, oh my gosh, this corner isn't quite right, Jody. Mm -hmm. ah, don't worry. So we're going to do it again. Try to line this one up here whoops best you can do it again la la la, la, and this is la exactly la. what i did but i used my ruler as my little etching tool sweet so anne has a plot just like this one at her house 
And the cool thing is, is that by using something that I knew that we both had, we had we both had just notebook paper or printer paper. And so this is kind of cool. So our plots are the same size. So here's our first three, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna do this because we have six situations, six uh, plots. Six we have five variables and one control. Boop. There's you. You need to have somebody holding you your camera. Oh, do what? You need to have somebody holding your camera. I know, sorry. But I don't. There we go. There's this one. And the last one is here. Sweet. There we go. There's our six. And yours look like this, Anne? Yes, mine look exactly like that. Sweet. So, because I'm a nerd, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pencil out really fast here. And I'm going to turn my pencil on because it's mechanical. <laughs> I told you I was a nerd. <laughs> and I'm going to kneel down on the wet ground and I'm just going to draw this out right here. So I know my compass points in my yard and where things are. And so I know that south and north is behind me. And I know that I set my plot up to look something like, now remember, I'm just drawing with one hand here, but, and this is just a sketch. If you guys see what I'm doing here. Looks like you're using invisible pencil lead. I am. <laughs> oh man, it's hard oh, to yeah. see. Can you see that? Yes, now we can. There's south. There's Got it. Yep. There it is. Right? So I drew a map because I need to know what I put where, right? Because right now you're probably right. going to be able to recognize this stuff, but another week or two, it could be indiscernible what exactly. it was. There. Exactly. All right. So if I remember correctly, uh, let's see, Anne. What mm -hmm. did, what was your plot? Can you, can you tell me your plot? Let's see the upper, What's your upper, upper left is ash. Ash. Okay. So first thing I do is ash. So I'm going to go in here. Going to get a cup. Ugh. Boop. Just, uh, there we go. So again, this is, you know, this isn't brain surgery. If it's, you know, I'm going to make a mess in the yard. No one's going to tell anyone. Okay, so upper left. Yep, it's ash. A of ash. And the upper left is ash. Correct. So what I want to do is is I don't want to fling this like I'm salting a steak from five miles away. I'm going to do it. We want it kind of even, so it's got some even melt to it underneath. Ooh. But you also want to keep it confined to its little plot space. Correct. La, 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 la. That's a lot of ash, Anne. I, I told you. <laughs> okay. Now notice I have some lovely chunks in there. Awesome. It's all right. Everybody's always going to have chunks. Yep. So I'm going to clean my cup up just a little bit to get the big chunks of ash out of there. And then your next one over was what? Next one to the right was sand. Sand. So I go in my sand bag here. Grab a lovely cup of sand. And 
if you can see, the sand has a really similar color to the ash, maybe. Mm -hmm. But we'll find out. So we're going to add the, the sand. Mm -hmm. la, 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 la. And then kind of go back and cover <laughs> sickly. <laughs> wow, that's, a, that's an awful lot. Ugh. All right. To clean, back up. clean this out. Look at that. You. This is like snow cone ice. Yeah. That's what this is like. Right, What's coffee next? Coffee grounds is your next one. Coffee grounds. So these are wet, right? Because yeah, I had to separate them. mine with my fingers a bit. Yeah. And it was gross. I put them outside to store them and then they froze. So then I brought them inside and then they thawed and it's kind of fun. Yeah, I tried to spread mine out on a cookie sheet to dry them out a little bit, but. How'd that work? Uh, a couple hours doesn't dry them out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is gross, but it's about right. There's my coffee. You might need to set your phone down to sprinkle nice that. Dark. To sprinkle this one? Okay. Yeah, because it's going to just bloop into one giant pile. So maybe do it this way? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And again, you know, we're trying to do this. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're trying to do this evenly, right? Right. So if you could apply dry coffee grounds, you might get a better result, for example. Mm -hmm. So we'll mm -hmm. note, always make notes of things. So for example, I would make some of these notes. One, I used wet coffee grounds. Mm -hmm. That's one note. Another note that I would add would be that um, the sand is, not just super fine sand, but that there's pebbles in it too. Mm -hmm. you, guys, yep. you see those? And then Save for the my ash, I take notes that I have chunks of charcoal in it left. Yep. Stuff like that. Those are the notes that you wanna you wanna make. So for all those of you who are super particular about things looking perfect, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there it is. All right, Yours below the coffee better. grounds is going to be your spruce tip or spruce needles. Spruce needles, got it. And stick. Oop. Snow cones. All right, spruce tips come next. La 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 la. Gotta open the back. Mm. Well, this is a block is angry at me. Doesn't like it. And what kind of notes would you add about your stuff in your um, in your experience? Uh, so far, I would probably add the same ones you are. Um, I don't know if I would have taken that measurement before putting those things down or yep. after. Which would you think would be the better route to go is put uh, probably to measure it beforehand so you can get that measurement from right outside your plot as well. Your measurement of what? The beginning measurement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Because we got to know what we're measuring from. True. So with the spruce, if you guys see what I'm doing here. There's some sticks and flotsam from the forest floor. And I'm not gonna be super picky about it, but at the same time, I did take out some of the larger pieces 
try to keep it just to spruce tips as, and grass or wh whoever is living in this. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do this spread. La, 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 la. You have to sing while you do this, by the way. That's right. Science is fun. Get this so it's interesting to see particle size here of your mediums and how where you've got ash and sand and how it cover it seems to cover it so thickly and densely as opposed to the coffee grounds where you have kind of clumps of wet coffee grounds and then the spruce needles themselves. Good. Oh, Good. We just lost your video. Uh oh, am I back yet? Yep, you're back. All right. Well, I'm down to 20 percent, so okay. I better hurry. Work faster. All right. Well, I've only got one more to add because the middle one is our what, Anne? The middle one is our control. Boop, boop. So, so you don't have this, to worry about that. Yep. So the last one is sawdust. And this is pretty fine sawdust, too. There's some like, you know, chainsaw sawdust, which is a little coarser. This is sawdust from, you know, inside a wood shop kind of sawdust, like carpentry shop. Good call. So if you have the coarser, you know, chainsaw sawdust, it's going to probably have a different rate of melt underneath it because Good. of just the particle size. Good point. Yeah, you definitely want to note all the details about your stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Looks so, so pretty. We lost Oops. you again. Are you there, Jody? Did we lose Jody? Are we having technical difficulties again? We'll give her another minute. And then I'll just show you my plot outside that I did earlier today. So I also made some labels for when I photograph mine that I'm going to set near there because I had this uh, bright orange cardstock on hand. Good old Sharpie and I'll just plop these down when I do my, oh, and she's gone, when I do my um, photograph. So I'll just take you outside right now and you just hang on. We'll be right there. I'm of my Alrighty, so thanks everybody. We appreciate you coming in and checking us out and learning about citizen science. And I hope that you can try something like this at your house, uh, somewhere where you go play, 
because it'll be interesting to see what kind of information comes out of it. So email me or Jody and uh, we'll get you that job form so you can record your observations and have a great time. Thanks for joining in.